Hello, Gumley. Welcome back. We're going to be doing a little bit on the mix editor today. So what a lot of the features of the mix editor do. To show you that, I'm going to go back to my test project, which I open in the mix editor. It'll load this very quickly as there's not very much to show. And I'm going to start by listing down the track types. Up on this left hand side, you can see add track. I'm going to do that. And you see five different track types. As you'll see from the green options, they're both MIDI options, which means that they are using MIDI data to create sound. For instruments, that is a general MIDI sound for any instrument. And for drum machines, it's a more rhythm-based UI that helps you create beats and rhythms really, really quickly. Voice slash microphone is a normal microphone input, which will use your laptop or computer's microphone to capture any sound. The guitar and bass tracks are for use with real life guitars and basses where you put the jack into your computer with an interface and you can have a bunch of amp sounds. It's very unlikely that you'll be using the guitar or the bass tracks as you are not likely to have an interface. So we're going to be using mostly MIDI instruments and voice slash microphone. I'm just going to run through a couple of the things to keep in mind whilst you're using BandLab. At the top, you see this options bar which allows us to download our tracks, create a cycle or a loop. The view section helps us change our grid size and you can even change the theme. Under settings, you can enable your metronome and change your metronome and there's a whole bunch of other settings here. And under help, you can see a lot of the shortcuts and even start a tutorial. In the navigation bar, which is this line at the top, you can control whereabouts you are in the track. You can see your timer going up and down there based on how far into the track you are. So if I stop here, I'm at 28.2 seconds. You can press play and pause and you can record. In this center section, you see more of the project settings. So we can change the key. So I can go into B flat major. You can change the tempo, which is in beats per minute. So if I type in here, you'll be able to see it change up to a maximum of 240 by the looks of it and down to a minimum of 40. This is the time signature, which can be changed by clicking on the top or bottom one and then changing it to one of the pre-designated numbers. Just right of that are the metronome settings where you can turn them on and off. And also there is a tap tempo and a bunch of metronome sounds which will change. Let's try this one. Fantastic. At the top here, you see the master volume for the entire project. And over on the far right, as we saw before, was our save button. Moving closer to the track itself, you can see it's got a mute button. It has a solo button. It has this volume slash level. Uh, this is panning, so for left or right. And we see this drop down, which can change a whole bunch of settings. So we can rename it. Hello. We can change the color of the track, which will be for when we're recording. It will come up in a lovely purple. Which helps us separate out uh, tracks that are quite similar. There are also a number of presets in here for easy access to effects and reverbs, etc. And there are also a number of settings for moving the track up and down, duplicating and deleting. We're almost through with the breakdown of the mix editor, but I'm just going to show you this section at the bottom. If you click this lower bar, you're going to see the source section. This is what input and output, etc. you're using for your microphone. Whereas if I create an instrument, it's going to show you the instrument option. As you might see, there are some letters written on the keys. That is because you can use your computer keyboard to play it. If you click into the instrument menu, I'm using my computer keyboard to play the notes. You can move the octave up and down. And even change the sound in this left window. 
and there's a whole bunch to choose from. It's definitely worth playing with yourself. Next up, I'm going to show you the effects. When you click effects, you see that there's absolutely nothing here at the moment. There are a number of presets that we saw before that we can pick, but what we're going to do is add some ourselves. When I click this big plus that says add effect, it's going to give me an option of many effects to choose from. I've decided that I want to put a reverb onto it. So I'm going to go to reverb, studio reverb. Now I have the reverb set up and I can change how much I want it to be in the mix out of 10, the size of the reverb and color, which usually changes something like EQ. Sounds pretty wild. There are a whole bunch of effects that you can play with and I definitely recommend that you test them out because you'll get much better at using them if you have more experience. That's enough for this little breakdown. We're going to get into more specifics for our project in the next lesson.